What's up guys? Welcome back to the F12, finally. I know you've been waiting for some more content with this car, so I am back in it. However, as I'm sure you've guessed by the title of this video, this isn't about this car, okay? I just thought, you haven't seen it in a while, and I better get it on camera because you've been asking about it, but rest assured, there will be lots more content coming with the F12 soon. However, that to one side, I have never been asked the same question so often that I have with the Speciali, okay? And I'm sure you're all aware that the comments on both my Instagram and on the uh, comments section of pretty much every video I post, where's the Speciali? Now, where do I start with addressing this? So, I've got to say, really it all started when the GT3 arrived. This wasn't planned. Okay, I got that car and after a few days of driving it, I was genuinely blown away by absolutely how fantastic that car really is. And Speciali in the driveway and a, a GT3. These are two cars which have been head-to-head -head since they were launched. I think the GT3 is certainly as good as the Speciali. I'm not going to say it's a better car, but you have to remember the price point of this car. It is literally half the price of a Speciali right now, right? So First of all, this is something that was sort of playing on my mind. I was kind of thinking, there's a lot of cash tied up here in two cars. One of them is doing a very similar job to the other one, uh, albeit half the price. Not, not quite as exotic. The GT3 isn't as exotic as, a, as an experience as the Speciali, but it has a faster gear shift. wasn't a daily car, that's not why I bought it, but I found myself gravitating generally towards the GT3 more often than I did the Speciali. And this is going to sound daft, but the worst thing I did with the Speciali was taking it on track. Hear me out. When you take a Speciali on track, you realize what that thing is designed for. And once you've got it up to that level of speed and, and sort of explored its the dynamics of what it was actually designed for, the feeling it gives you, the feedback it gives you, opens up a whole new world of wow. And I would, and I will say, a newer, better world of wow than the GT3 does on track. It's just more fun. With that said, the problem with that I found was once I got it back on the road, I was nowhere near, nowhere near trying to extrapolate that kind of performance out of the Speciali that, that I could actually enjoy it. And I sort of had this experience of how wow it can be, and then you get it on the road and you just can't get anywhere near it. Whereas I found with the GT3, I can use almost all of the car, almost all of the time. You can floor that, that thing in almost any gear, rev it right out, it still revs out to 9,000 revs, sounds fantastic, it gives you a great feeling, even when you're on the road. Those things being said, the biggest contributing factor to this, and I'll be completely honest and straightforward here, was I had a call from my dealership, from my Ferrari dealer, saying there's big demand out here for Speciali. Would I consider selling that car back to them? The car was never officially for sale. This is a double-edged sword. When you get a call from your dealership, from a Ferrari dealership, asking to buy your car back, for those of you who might not know, it's, a, it's an absolute blessing because 
you stay in what is known as their good books. I know this sounds lame. I know it sounds lame that you have to play this game where you've got to sort of stay in Ferrari's good books. But if a dealer offers to buy your car back off you at what I will say is an embarrassing amount of money more than I paid for it. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. You kind of say yes, because you're maintaining those brownie points for any future cars, which I assure you there is. We won't go into that just yet because it's some time off, but there are other cars in the pipeline. So I had this double combo of GT3 being fantastic, doing almost everything that the Speciali did for almost half the price, and all of a sudden, the inflation in prices, in value of the Speciali going up so much that it was hard to ignore. It was, I mean, the prices went absolutely batshit crazy. On top of that, I wasn't flipping it privately. I wasn't selling that car to a, a, a private buyer. I had the opportunity of keeping it within my sort of Ferrari dealer network. So, here I am, here I am saying it. The Speciali is gone. I have sold the Speciali. sad I'm sad to see it go but owning the GT3 has made that transition so much easier I won't lie the value the money that I got back from that Speciali in such a short amount of time is nothing short of gobsmacking there are cars planned there are cars in the pipeline there's cool stuff coming there's cool stuff happening but for the time being I'm enjoying the F12 I'm enjoying the GT3 and there are road trips planned, we've got Gumball coming up, we have Top Marks Tour coming up. This is going to be such a great year for content. It is next level. The things that we have lined up, I cannot wait to take you along for. Super exciting times. And listen, I want to take this opportunity as well at this point to say thank you so much for watching my videos up until now. I only started this whole YouTube thing, my YouTube channel five months ago, you know, we hit 60,000 subscribers last week. Small numbers compared to some of the guys on, on here, but to me, it's a massive deal. So every time I upload this clip, I'm just shocked that 60,000 people want to see this content. So thank you so much. So there you have it. The Speciali is gone. I can confirm it. It is out. It is done. And we're now looking ahead to move on. There is things in the pipeline and there is a new car coming soon. It's not replacing uh, the Speciali. It is replacing the R8 and that'll be here maybe in the next six weeks. Fingers crossed. All right guys, as usual, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ciao.